Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. At some time in our lives, most of us have probably played the game Follow the Leader. It involves making choices whether to follow a person or not over and through things. Now, of course, there are some who you can trust to keep your sa you safe, but now nah, there are others you need to be very careful with. We have many people today in our world who say, oh, come follow me. But what kind of criteria do we set up for whom we decide to follow? Number one, it is a good idea to look at their history of the choices that they have made in the past. Number two, how they have treated people, especially those who have little to nothing. Number three, what have they gained? Knowledge or money, power, and control? Now, of course, there are no perfect human leaders. This week, we will be the site for three precincts for the presidential primary elections, even though we probably know who the candidates are. And as I said last Sunday, I don't tell you who to vote for, but maybe these three criteria we can all use in making our decisions. And of course, above all, we ask God. Healthy leadership in our workplaces are more and more difficult to come by. There is so much anxiety on whether you have a job and how you look to the boss, who is trying to please who, and doing a good, honest job is not always the ticket today. And we have experienced in many different forms a lack of work ethic. That leads me to the question, who are people following? And as Christians, I believe that we are called to have a healthy work ethic. Now, I worked at a friendly as going to seminary, and after the middle shift as manager, the dishwasher came in and a high school guy got his paycheck and said, I quit, and that was the end. I thought, well, that's kind of irresponsible in my book. Maybe there were extenuating circumstances, but between he and his parents, I'm wondering what kind of responsibility was he learning at least two weeks' notice. Now, of course, as Christians, we are called to follow Jesus. And, of course, Jesus had a good, healthy work ethic. Jesus was the leader. And we know even when we try and follow Jesus, we can never fully do it. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus is trying to let his disciples know what will be coming. 
that he must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Peter was not looking for this kind of leader, this one to follow. So he took Jesus aside and said, nah, this wasn't going to be happening. Jesus said, Peter, your anxiety has gotten the best of you. You are setting your mind on earthly things and not trusting me as your leader. Thus, if you really want to follow me, you must let go of your anxiety in wanting to have it your way and take up your cross and follow me. Now, too often, this passage gets interpreted to be, well, look at me, I have to do this cross business on my own. I don't believe this is what Jesus is saying. He is saying that we can't rely on ourselves for this direction. We are called to rely on Jesus, which means studying God's word, listening to others, and discerning how to carry the cross together. How to carry the cross together. And Jesus models what it means to carry the cross until he physically has to do it. Jesus is trying to clue them in, in that following him and carrying his cross together may not be what we are all looking for it will mean realizing that we don't have all the answers and focusing on only on us is not following him. Now, Jesus is not asking us to throw our lives away when he says that we need to deny ourselves and lose our lives. It is giving our wills over to Jesus. It is realizing that we own nothing in God's eyes, as in reality, God owns everything. It is about forever trying to discern God's will for our life and living that out. And that's when we can experience the abundant life. You see, this is not what saves us, but it is a response to God's love when we want to follow Jesus. We are called to live our lives for the sake of others. This is what Jesus modeled for us as recorded in our Gospels. Even to the end, Jesus lived out God's will. Now, it is not easy and it creates anxiety as it did for Peter. There are times we would like to say, no, Jesus, it's not supposed to be this way. Anxiety comes when we are trying to protect ourselves. Not all anxiety is bad. It can be a red flag, but it can also be something that clouds our view of God's will for our lives and the life of our community of faith. Change does bring anxiety. We are in the process of transition and we just lost one of our faithful witnesses. Walter was becoming the president of Faith Lutheran Church. And when I think of the criteria that I suggested in looking to follow a leader, number one, it is a good idea to look at their history and what kind of choices they have made in the past. Number two, how they have treated people, especially those who have little to nothing. Number three, what they have gained, knowledge or money, power and control. I believe that I saw Walter fulfilling these to the best of his human ability. He was also a valued voice on the transition team. And from what I have heard and seen, Walter was a sure and steady leader. He listened to people. He helped guide faith through some conflicted times. Walter was not out for glory, as I believe what he prayed for is that this beloved community would become healthier and more focused on doing God's will at this time. Walter saw changes that could be made to make health a, 
faith, a healthier beloved community. So when a trusted and valued leader moves on, it is important for us to stop and consider what he taught us by the way he led. It looks like our newly elected vice president, Randy, will be taking over as president. Walter asked Randy to serve as vice president, not knowing that his life on earth was drawing to a close. I do believe Walter relied on God for direction here also. What Jesus is calling us to do is to bear the cross together. We need leaders, we need followers. At certain times in our lives, we are called to be leaders and other times, followers. Whether we are a leader or a follower, it is all bearing the cross of Christ together. God has been teaching through leaders, including Jesus, that we are called to put our wills aside for the care of God's people. There's an old gospel hymn. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for us. <clears throat> How happy are the saints above who once went soaring here, but now they taste a mingled love and joy without a tear. The consecrated cross we'll bear till death shall set us free and then go home our crown to wear and there's a crown for us. Jesus calls us today to follow him first to bear his cross together. As we are deciding who we follow, consider these criteria. Number one, it is a good idea to look at their history and what kind of choices they have made in the past. Number two, how they have treated people, especially for those who have little or nothing. Number three, what have they gained? Knowledge or money, power, and control. Jesus modeled how to be a leader, and he calls us today to follow him and bearing the cross together so that then we may model what it means to follow Jesus, to carry and model his life, giving love to this power-driven world. Amen. Amen.